test, test, test. Nice. Test, test, test. Come on. First try. <laughs> oh my God. Here. Cheers, mics. Nice. Very nice. Here. Hold on. Sorry, team. Listeners, not sorry. Team. That, that was a really big moment for us. <laughs> you see, every time we start this podcast, there seems to be an issue. But this and time, it's always on Cade's side, mind you. I'm the always. only one. I'm the only one doing the shit on over here. It's funny though because you're also the only one fucking up. It ain't me, dude. Okay, but it ain't me either. So now my mic has never had a problem. That is true. Yeah, Hard so, to argue I, with so that. I must be doing something right. All right. Anyway, that, maybe that should be a lesson to learn. Like, take the easy approach sometimes. I try. The easy approach don't fucking work sometimes. All right. Anyway, fine. Gray's now a college graduate. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you I feel different? Journey. Not at all. Not one bit. How's your corporate Nothing. job going? With the nice salary, with benefits, brand new car, wife, house. Nope. Dog. Nope. That wasn't in the cards for me. Oh, Instead that's good, of, though. Nope. Now I'm taking the hard route. I'm not giving up into the system yet. Good. Never. Fight the system. We are fighting the system. This is what we're doing right now. Yes, exactly. This is fighting the system. Okay. Um, do you have anything new to share with us this week, uh, well, Mr. Gray Pittman? Well, you may be wondering why I'm dressed so much nicer then my guy Kate Harvey right here and it's because I finally shot my first commercial that actually got me paid so yeah congrats yeah. which Kate 100% set up for me but I still had to do the damn thing you did and uh, by the looks of it at least I got to I, w- I was supposed to direct this commercial but I ended up not being able to because I had to do something else for the job I work so Gray had to go it solo without me. I was hoping this would be our first time on set to work together, but it wasn't. Um, but I did get to show up a little bit late at the very end. And from what I saw, it seemed like you did a pretty good job. Thanks, Kate. Thank you very much. No, it, was, uh, it was a lot. If you don't know anything about how shooting anything is, we'll just know it's just a lot of retakes of saying the same exact thing, but just in a lot of different ways. So... I think that's why I really love this podcast because I knew for a fact that no matter what the fuck I said here, we can't redo it. Nope. I'm not going to cut it. Uh Uh-uh. Nope. And so there's just something so refreshing at knowing that if I fuck up or get it absolutely right, we'll never know because that's just what it's going to be. Yep. Today's movie that we're going to watch is... Sushi. Sisu. Sisu. Sushi. That's why, you know... Okay. Sisu. I don't know why. I just wanted to say Sushi. Sisu is a movie that is in theaters right now, but we're going to stream it. And A Finland movie. A movie from Finland. We didn't Dude, know you, you anybody it, in the cast. You think it's not in English? No. Well, oh, I didn't even think about that. Me either. There's not a single American actor in that movie. That's okay. I've been watching Narcos a lot, so I guess... I, I don't can, mind subtitles, to be honest with you. No, 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 no. But, you know... We're going to have to eat that steak before the movie. You know, no, I do mind subtitles when it's in English. I hate when yeah, people I don't do put that. the subtitles on for a movie. I can't do it. I can't do it. It I distracts can't. me, dude. I'm looking at... Because, okay, if you have to do it, okay, yes. But if you don't have to do it, it's so annoying because I always look down and I'm not watching the movie. I'm reading the movie. Yeah. I don't get to appreciate the shots, the cinematography, the editing, any of it because I'm always just focused on reading. It, it, it does become um, invisible after a while because you kind of forget that you're reading it. Yeah. But still, dude, I just can't do it. I don't like when people put the subtitles on when there's a movie that you can understand. Yeah. Well, I just, I don't get it. I'm like, wait a minute. We all speak English. Like People claim we they don't can't have, hear. We don't have subtitles like just talking back and forth in real life. Like People claim they can't hear the movie because it's too quiet or there there are some movies where like tenet you know what i f- i haven't watched it with subtitles but i did see it in theaters and i definitely remember at some points so i was like damn the soundtrack might be going a little too hard so, i could really I, I would really appreciate to know what the fuck robert pattinson just said i actually heard an argument for why it doesn't matter 
that you can't hear it because so this video I watched, I can't remember the YouTuber's name, but he was breaking down how Tenet is a vibe movie. The storyline doesn't matter. You don't really have to understand what's going on because it's a pretty uh, it's a pretty complex movie. A lot of the dialogue that you can't hear, it doesn't matter what they're saying. You just know they're talking about something important. You know they're talking about or something important in their storyline of like they're talking about te- technical details. They're just giving you exposition. You don't really need to know that to understand the movie. It's more of just like you understand what's going to happen. You know kind of the, the vibe of the movie, what's going on, but you don't need to know what they're saying, truly, to have the full experience of the movie. So they were. he was arguing that you don't really need to hear the dialogue. It doesn't matter. People were upset about it, but if you really listen to what they say in the parts that you can't hear, like the one scene he talked about specifically was when they're on the boat uh, sailing and the sound, like the music's going hard and the, you know, the wind's going hard and you can't really hear what they're talking about. All they're saying is just talking about the details of the mission and about what's happening overseas. They're kind of just giving you like what's going on in the, in the world. And that doesn't really matter with the movie. Hmm. Wow. I don't know. That sounds pretty important. I mean, a little bit, but to give me more context about what's going on in the world to understand like why the mission means so much, I'd appreciate it. But you, but you know what the mission is, you know, that they're trying to get these abstract, the movie's very abstract. Clearly, even the, <laughs> even the, what they're trying to get after these pieces that connect together are very abstract looking pieces. So you don't need to understand the abstract of it. You just need to watch it and enjoy it and just feel the movie. He was saying, Ooh. don't worry about like understanding it. Worry about feeling it. Even there's a part in the movie where the lady's talking to him. She's like, don't try to understand it. She said, just, I she said something that, like, yeah, yeah something along those lines where don't, don't worry about trying to understand it or comprehending it. So he was saying the same thing for the movie. Just stop trying to figure it out. Just enjoy it. Just watch it. Just get the vibe of it. Understand what it's about. The fun of it. The action scene. Just kind of vibe. I vibed. I vibed. I went and saw it with Dave and Chris. They both vibed so hard they passed the fuck out in the middle of that theater. Popped an edible before they watched it. Yeah, there might have been a hot box. <laughs> but I was locked in. I was like, oh, I'm about to understand the shit out of this movie. No, no, I've seen it three times since and uh, without subtitles. And you know what? Maybe if I had subtitles, I just, maybe I could get it. That's okay. I felt it. I don't think you're supposed to get it. It's complex. It's about time travel. Who cares? Just understand. You're right. Who cares? Maybe we should, we should talk about Seesaw. Yes. We're watching Sisu, not Seesaw. I don't have my phone. I can't give you any stats on this movie, who it's made by. We can do that after, I guess. We just know it's a Finland movie, and apparently in the updated trailer, because the, what was the story? The storyline is about a gold miner who finds gold, and now he has to travel across Finland, I'm assuming. Yeah, I said that in the trailer. Finland. Travel across Finland to go to a bank to collect his money. And yes. while he's there, he comes across some military people. I don't know what time it's in, if it's like... I think it said 1944. Is that during a world war? Yeah. I think it is. So yeah, it might sure be the is. Nazis or might be... Who, who knows who it is? I'm sure they're... I hate how I don't know what I'm talking about. I think it was Nazis. Anyway, they go across some bad people. They try to stop him and he just fucking murders them. Yes. And he's got a cool little dog with him. And a lot of people weren't showing out to the movie in the theaters because they were afraid the dog was going to die. Which is pretty weak, guys, okay? Everything dies in this world. If you can't handle seeing, like, a dog die in a movie, you know, you're not my kind of people. A dog dying is responsible for creating the most epic action series ever made. Skadoosh. John Wick. John Wick. Dog died. Have you seen... You didn't like the first one, really. Not a big John Wick guy. I I think you would like it, but it was too hyped up for you. Probably. That was your issue. I think it was too hyped and you were expecting this great movie, but it's not a great like film. Like it's not a good like written, well-written movie, but it's fun and it's a great action movie. Yeah, there's a lot of action. Two, three, and four, they get even better. Number four, dude, I wish you watched them all because I wish 
I want to. I want us to watch number four. I see number four. Is it one of those things where do I have to watch number two to see number three, and then see number three to see number four? No. Uh, no. To fully understand the story, yes. You don't really need to. I would say actually, yeah, you probably do need to, just so you understand the whole aspect of it, and you get the. That way, you can kind of get the sense of John Wick movies. Okay. So you can know what to expect. Because if you go into this one, Mercedes hasn't seen the first one all the way through. So I took her to watch number four. And number four is a lot of fighting. Because it's the last one of the series. So it's like a lot of fighting, right? It's like his most epic battle to him redeeming himself. You know, all that, whatever. So there's a lot of fighting. So if you're not a fan of the movies and you haven't seen the rest of them, if you're not invested in his storyline, you're like, dude, when are they going to stop fucking fighting? Yeah. But it's good. Action scenes are insane, dude. Yeah. There's a there's a there's a shot or a scene rather where there's it's like a top view, kind of like a video game. Have you ever played? Have you played? Do you play video games? Besides I, like I Call of Duty, to, I used to play like action video games. Have you ever played the Dark Knight Arkham? Knight? I, yeah, I played like the Arkham Asylum. Yes. Yeah. You remember how it's like that top view of Batman? You can see all the enemies around you and you're yeah. fighting them. So it's like that shot of John Wick walking through a building. So you can see, there's no roof. You just, see, you just see all the walls. And he has a shotgun that has incendiary rounds, which are rounds that like spark flames out. So when you shoot somebody with the incendiary round, they burst into flames. Not to disintegrate, but they're on fire now because they have these fucking shells on them that are on fire. And so he's walking through this building and you're seeing it from the top view. You've seen everybody pile in to come in and attack him. And he just poof, blowing them up as he's going around. Just poof, poof. And you see them coming, and he's fighting them. And, dude, the shot is just so sick because it's kind of dark. So you see this bright light of spark coming out. It's a pretty badass scene, and it's like in the meat of the movie. Damn, it's like I shouldn't even watch the movie anymore. No, you should. It'd make, it'd make it better. We should probably get back to Shih Tzu. Yes. I think the dog dies. Apparently, the movie wasn't doing so hot because a lot of people thought the dog wasn't going to die. Or the, they thought the dog was going to die. So then they released another trailer that literally states the dog lives. And I think for that reason, the dog's going to die. That would be pretty fucked up. I God, I hope they do it. I Not that I want to see an on-screen death. I hope everybody lives in this movie, no, although don't. that's not possible. But the dog looks pretty cool, pretty kick-ass dog. And we're both dog owners. You know, I'm a dog lover. I'm also a people lover, too. So No, you're not. Not when it's an enemy in a movie. The Nazis, you want the Nazis to live? Can we put you can we quote you right now that you said I would I would like the Nazis to live? You can't quote me on that because I didn't say that. Okay. I'm just saying I think it would be pretty kick ass of the people that made this movie, especially the ones that made the trailer that says the dog lives. That'd be a pretty baller move, like if they killed that dog. So We know about it if they did. If they advertised that they didn't kill the dog and then they actually did kill the dog, that's that's true that's big headlines right there well then you know what it kind of sucks then I'm already not a fan of this movie just for the fact that they spoiled it cause keep talking well they they spoiled the movie so I just I don't like that sorry I had to fix the focus of the camera okay let's go I'm watch hungry. this fucking thing I'm hungry let's go eat and watch this yeah. movie <laughs> All right. And we're back. We just watched Sisu. Okay, before <laughs> before you say anything about what you just watched, <laughs> tell me what you expected to see. We should have said this probably before we watched it, but tell me what what did you expect to see in this movie? That's such a hard question to ask. No, now. but just based off the... <laughs> like after what we just saw, I forgot what I was expecting going into this movie. Think about the trailer, what you saw, like what... <laughs> I, uh, okay, I'm gonna really. Um, uh, wow, what did I expect? 
I don't know. I <sighs> I expected a cool little action movie with this badass dude that was going to just wreak havoc on people that came after him. And he was going to get the gold and turn it in and get his money and maybe something happens. And that's kind of what happened in the movie, except... Well, I actually... It's funny you say that because that's exactly what just happened in this movie. <laughs> yeah. You okay? I'll tell you this. I didn't expect to see the strongest movie character of all time presented to all of us. Like here first, before we get into it, let's just explain in case those who are listening haven't seen this movie. This movie was probably the most unrealistic, absurd action movie i've ever seen in my life of all time it's not even close let's name let's go through the list of the things that he's managed to make it through with no <laughs> see and that's, no explanation that's what nice that's what's nice is uh you know this movie is broken down in like quentin tarantino chapters okay movie started off strong you're like oh cool this has got chapters usually a movie that has chapters is usually pretty good it's artsy they got a, they got confidence in themselves they're yeah. gonna break it up into chapters and they're going to put cool titles on screen and you know they thought it out sweet this one no just did it just because i just i'm i'm struggling to figure out like what i'm gonna actually have to say about this movie because okay let's just go by chapter chapter one he finds the gold cool chapter two uh the nazis the nazis like the first it's in it's in the trailer like it's not even a spoiler the the truckload of Nazis puts him on his knees. He kills all of them. All right, that's been done before. In some similar way, we've seen a protagonist just show that he is like the real fucking deal. Yep. Then we got the minefield. Yeah. So well, you know, you really can't even like just skip to the minefield because like. Not only he just killed like a truckload of Nazis, but then there's like this like this old this whole squadron of like I don't know it's like two trucks and a tank maybe three trucks and a tank, all full of Nazis, and they let him go by at first, but then they hear a bunch of gunshots. They go back. They realize oh shit, this old man just killed a whole truckload of Nazis, and he has gold. They realize they're losing the war, so they're like, okay, our best bet to make it out alive is to go kill this old man and get our gold, and like that's that's how we'll go out. In the grand scheme of things, this movie, the real, to be honest with you, the people that I cheered for the most, because they were the only ones that really had a real motive, you, you, were the Nazis. You, oh man, I was just about to say, you got to... You gotta pick your next word so <laughs> carefully, but it's too late. It's already been said. Is that not Cade true? was rooting for the Nazis in this movie. You can't. Are we in the first half of this fucking show? We already just, we already picked out that you were the Nazi sympathizer. No, not true. Not true at all. I was going for the old man. I just didn't realize. I was too, but I'm just saying from the motive standpoint, the only real person that had a motive was the fucking Nazis because they were like, the only way we're gonna get out of this is if we get the gold. But the old man just wanted the gold. He had no real motive. He just wanted to cash it in for no reason. Lost his family, but what's he going to do with the money? I guess chill. Or maybe just go buy way more weapons. Cause, I maybe mean, go to space? Go watch this movie. It's the most indestructible character ever conceived. And it's not even close. It's not even close. This guy, let's just let's just think about it. Okay, so we were at the we were at the Nazis and they were at the minefield. So the minefield didn't go too crazy because, you know, there's a little a extra part where he throws a mine and it perfectly hits a guy in the forehead and he blows up. Well, before that, he's like looking. Well, at the he truck. also survived the mine. He sur like we don't legs even... legs didn't blow off, but the entire horse's middle section blew off. Yeah, where his legs were, but his legs didn't get destroyed. I mean. I thought that was the I thought that was going to be the most ridiculous part of the movie, and I was so wrong. I couldn't have been more wrong. I just, I mean, we're I'm, we're talking about the most indestructible character ever conceived in film. I just, I don't just think, watched it happen. I just don't think that and the I writer. I still don't know his name. Yeah, I don't even. 
Yeah, but I don't know his name either. I don't think the writer... He's just the legend. The writer of this movie didn't really think this through, in my opinion. You can make a guy indestructible and make it believable. But you got to explain some shit. <laughs> you got to explain some shit. Okay, here we go. Minefield. That was the next chapter, chapter three. He gets out of it, survives. He blows up the minefield as the Nazis are there waiting for him. And but somehow he gets through it just They fine. start shooting at him through the smoke, and he has his little thin metal thing. Captain like, American shield. Yeah, fucking made of vibranium, apparently. Yeah. Holds up his little metal tin and just <laughs> bounces bullets off of it. Didn't get hit in the leg once as bullets are just nope. whizzing by him. Yep. I guess he did get hit in the leg once in the Not arm. by those shots. No. Nope. No. Nope. After that, what happened? Well, after the minefield, he was at the burning city. No, somehow it's the the water. They end up in the pond. Like they do catch right. up to him. And That's right. He yeah, go, he so he escapes. He he lights himself on fire. Okay. Well, first, so he after the minefield, he ends up running away, escapes, and they keep chasing him. And he ends up hiding behind this burned down truck that the Nazis just destroyed probably a couple days ago. So he hides by that as the Nazis pass by. He somehow manages to sneak underneath the bus without any of them watching while they have attack dogs. People are looking around. They're moving slow. Whatever. That, not really believable, but we, we can let that one slide. He gets underneath the truck. It's dragged by it. it he's, everybody's looking ahead of themselves. Have you ever looked ahead of a truck? You can see underneath it pretty well. <laughs> Especially there's a man dragging below it. Anyway, stabs the gasoline tank underneath the truck, pours gas all over himself and all, all over the floor. I guess that was just to trick the dogs. I don't know why he did that. They Yeah, because I guess the soldiers were like, gasoline, like the dogs can't do anything, blah, blah, blah. But like... Okay, maybe that ruined the dog's sense of smell. It's something like that. Okay. It, I Sure. God, just <laughs> make something make sense at this point. So that happens. They end up getting by a pond... Where he dives in to he avoid He lights gunshots. himself on fire, right, after, dodges yeah, yeah. yet again another whole, like there's like six dudes shooting at him with yep. fully automatic Yeah, I forgot that part. Bef- before he jumps in the water, the gasoline that's soaked on his clothes, he takes a match with one finger, lights it. <laughs> Mind you, he didn't use, he just, he just, he just flicked gives it with his the thumb. Th- he just gives the thumbs up and then lights himself on fire, runs for the entire dock. Which, yeah. And he doesn't have any, you know, it's just his clothes with gasoline. Yeah. In high school, I, me and my buddies, we had a kid who was willing to put lighter fluid on his, like a jacket. And one of my other buddies would take a lighter and then take the lighter fluid and put it in his mouth. And then he would, you know, fire breathe it onto the kid with the jacket <laughs> with lighter fluid on it light him on fire, and then he would jump in the lake. So that's doable with lighter fluid, okay? And that's dangerous with lighter fluid. But gasoline, bro? It's still burning. Gasoline's insanely flammable. Yeah. You Have you ever, put, have you ever lit a fire with gasoline before? <laughs> you, put, you put gasoline on a fire, you put a match in it, it goes... <gasps> immediately is on, like, an extremely hot fire. For sure going to burn his clothes off oh his also his clothes didn't burn his clothes didn't burn either (laughs) (laughs) okay anyway jumps in the water sure okay we'll let it pass even that even him on fire clothes didn't burn with gasoline on him we will let that pass jumps in the water bullets come down the water stops it from you know letting the bullets penetrate him and then we can't let it pass anymore once okay so once he's down in the water, he's he's chilling at the bottom of this pond and he's using the bag of gold that he has to keep him just at the bottom. <clears throat> and so this German captain, whatever, he's like sending more and more of his soldiers into the water. And this man, Sisu. That's not his name, but that's what he's got. Is it? It's Sisu. They refer to him as Sisu. No, they call him something else. No, they call him Sisu. No, they don't. Yeah, they do. No, they don't. The ladies in the truck. No, she said that she <clears throat> he has that. They called him a. They had a oh. Russian name for him. Okay. Well, either way, he's at the bottom of this pond. 
German soldiers are like just going in there and he kills them. He slits their throat and then he starts breathing out of their necks, like just sucking on like a vampire pretty much. Like he opens their throat, doesn't put his mouth up to it. He just kind of lets the air bubbles come up and goes. And that's how he maintains oxygen for two bodies. He kills two people. Yeah. And stays there for, you know, a long, long time. That's how he survives. And okay, then, so that's pretty just ridiculous. Think, You're like, okay, what? He just drank. He just sucked the air out of somebody's lungs after he slit their throat. Yeah, it's after like, the what? minefield too. I'm just like, well, okay. There's a lot of questionable things going on. But then after that, I'm just like, you know, I probably got to do some research to see, like, is that possible? Definitely not. But it's like, all right, whatever. And then after, okay, now he runs we, away. We've okay? officially gotten to the point where it's like, no. No, 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 no. He escapes the pond, runs away to a town, lays down, hides out. And then they come for him, obviously. They find him, beat him up, catch him, put a noose around his neck, and fucking hang him. Hang him. Like, they hang him. There's nothing, like, they, nothing is he's holding him just, up. He's just hanging. He's dead. I mean, he passes out, and then he I mean, wakes stay, up the next morning. And they, and they stay there for a while. I mean, they're standing there. Yeah, they take like their hats off. They salute him. They're like, man, that was that guy had a lot of grit. You know, he lived up to the legend. That guy was crazy, but we got him. They walk should away. Should be dead. They walk away, and, he, and then he goes. <laughs> like the next morning nope well he did it that night oh, and, no, then, no, no. and then he hooked his leg on a like apparently if you just stick your leg if you stick a nail in your leg to make yourself stop swinging <laughs> that also <laughs> helps you breathe <laughs> so all night this dude just I mean <laughs> I guess just held his neck tight so it didn't choke him <laughs> he's just he just I guess gives himself just a little bit of support to just like and then that's by, the only and, logical explanation but it doesn't by, matter because he was hanging there for like four minutes they watched him they like took their hats off watched him hang some more watched him hang some more watched him hang some more like he's hanging he's dead dead and then by the power of coincidence which is also called bad writing yeah they always say when you're writing a story coincidence should only negatively impact the character there should never be something in the storyline that coincidentally happens that saves him and of course that's what happens a lot in this movie oh my god and coincidentally a plane lands at that random fucking house in the middle of this giant country where it's there's a bunch of burned buildings yeah it's just burned buildings like why why would you stop there and i guess the wind <laughs> the wind knocked the pole over <laughs> so the he, wind from the plane knocks the pole over and then he he falls on the ground and then ends up killing one of the guys kills one of the pilots then saves, doesn't kill one yeah, of the other pilots doesn't he, kill one of the pilots so that way he can take him on the plane to go k- find his gold because at this point he, they kill him and the nazis now take the gold of the old man yeah let's be real this is just a bollywood film I mean, but Bollywood films, you know what you're expecting. And even like, I this know, I was, I was expecting a real deal, like survival war tale. Cause like, like even like R, R, R crazy stuff happens, but it's not like, it's not unbelievable. He runs from a tiger. Okay. But, but it's not like breaking the flaws of physics. Like, okay, maybe this guy is super strong and super fast. Maybe he could jump and avoid two tigers. Is that highly unlikely? Yes. Is it impossible? No. That is something that could happen in the world. A man fucking hanging from his neck all night, that's not possible. And it's also, we know a Bollywood movie is going to have some craziness to it. A Bollywood movie would probably just show this guy's a really strong neck. Like, have you seen The Magnificent Seven? Yeah. When the guy has a giant neck and just is like swinging by his neck because it's so strong. <laughs> Okay, how about you explain that before you just let him hang all night and then just he survives and that's it? Oh, you yeah. think this is just some old man that is like a good war hero, like good war veteran, and he knows how to kill, but like you don't think he's God. 
No. Or not even God, just some immortal. I mean, this is some crazy shit. Truly, I mean, I watched him hang. Like, the whole hanging scene, that was like four minutes, dude. And we've talked about this for a minute, and that's not even the worst part. No, no, that's not even the worst death. So at once or the it starts, worst survival. Once worst it, survival. Once it started getting crazy like that where he hung all night, me and Gray are just laughing. And we're like, dude, what? And I make the joke where I say, oh, the end of the movie, he's going to go to space. We're joking bit. about him because that would be outrageous. There's nothing about space in this movie. However, by the way this movie's going, we could be like, oh, yeah, <clears throat> homeboy's going to space at the end of this. And then at the end of the movie, there's a plane taking off where the Nazis have his gold. It's just two guys left. He's shooting at him through the plane. He doesn't hit him. And then he takes his pickaxe that he mined his gold with and is screaming toward the plane that's coming toward him that's about to take off. How and fast I, do planes go? Pretty fast. Pretty fucking 400, fast. 500, I don't know how about that old plane, but new planes are like 500 miles an hour, 400 miles an hour. It's fast. And the plane's and coming to take off. Air. He's screaming with his pickaxe, and I just turn to Gray, and I go, oh, my God. He's going to space. <laughs> he hacks, sure enough. <laughs> he hacks out the plane, sticks himself in, and now is in the air, he's just, holding he's on, the, onto his pickaxe, flying through the air underneath this plane. Not only that, he has enough momentum to like get the pickaxe in the air with the plane going as fast as planes do. I don't know the specifics, but it, I know that... If you're hanging on by a plane, somehow... It's at least 200 miles an hour, at least. You don't have the momentum to get your pickaxe and do this. Like, it's going to fly off, like, or you just don't even have, like, the power to get it up. But he's something... He breaks through that fucking plane. Best believe he breaks through that plane. And then, as the movie goes on, the plane starts to crash. Because for some reason, the propellers died. Yeah, I thought it was just going to be, like, a pilot error. No, just... No, plane just, that was it. Just Planes kaput. dies, plummets to the ground, nose dives to the ground. He's looking for a parachute. There's no parachute. Looks underneath the bin. There's no parachute in the bin. So he grabs a rope. He ties himself to the wall. I don't even know what it's he like, tied himself to. It's like the corner of the plane or yeah, something. Yeah, the corner of the plane. He ties himself to the corner of the plane and goes, he wraps his arms around his body and goes, Argh! And then the plane just nose dives into the ground, crashes, crash so hard that the plane isn't even visible above the <laughs> ground afterward. The plane is literally, I'm not kidding. The plane is literally under the ground. You don't see the plane. He's in a mud pile. It's like maybe coincidentally the plane landed in this mud pile and that saved him. But no, dude, no, a nose dive crawls out of the mud pile. No plane in sight, no broken bones, just a couple cuts on his body. Yeah, clothes are still intact, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no burned, <laughs> no burned clothes. <laughs> Crawls out, finds his gold, takes it to the nearest town, asks for bills, and makes one of the funny. It was a good joke. It was a good punchline. He said, in Finnish, he says. I want it all in bills. It'll be a lot lighter than the gold I've been carrying. Yeah, it'll be a lot. It'll be a lot. Be a lot lighter than what I've been yeah, carrying. Yeah, something like be a lot damn whatever he said. Something along those lines. Also, yeah, the ending. Of course, it's the first and only time he talks in the movie. He doesn't say a fucking word throughout this whole movie. I mean, I'm a big fan of just fun action movies. I like some explanation though. But you gotta make it at least a little realistic where you can kind of believe what's happening. But at this point, you're like, dude, I can't believe any of this. It takes you out of the movie so much so that you're like, okay, come on. There's a whole lot of, all right, come on in these movies. So many. But it was good. I mean, hey, we were laughing. We were laughing because with a movie like this, we were just like, there's no way it gets more ridiculous than this. And we were so wrong. We were so wrong, and I think that's, like, what kept me so engaged. Like, at the end of the day, like, this movie, it had me into it because I was like, oh, my God. Like, he is going to survive, and it's going to be 
ridiculous and it's not going to make any sense. And when I see that man crawl out of that mosh, like after the plane crashes, I was like, I don't even need an explanation at this point. Like there's nothing to say, not nothing. And I think that this movie was just like an exaggeration of like war stories that people hear because that's like all it is. It's like, you know, going into the movie, they explain like, uh, like this guy is famous for being like a Finnish soldier and like his family dies. And so like even the Finland army, like couldn't even control him. So they just like set him out in the woods and he kills over 300 Russians. And they like pretty much say like he's invincible and that's it. And so like this and, movie, and then he is this, pr- I mean, yes. Like, and so I think the movie is just like a story about like a human that just can't die because like that's he can, what, no, he that's can what the die. legends he just like refuses said. to he refuses to die that's right that's right yeah okay what what is there to say what's your give me your rating what, what, what out of 10 what do you rate this movie I'll tell you the one thing I did like about this movie is the cinematography I thought the shots were cool they did have really good shots it, it was a very beautiful yeah. looking movie yeah. That's that's what made me want to watch it in the first place. The trailer would look cool. It was like, oh, this is, looks like a well made movie. Well made movie, poorly written. Poorly written in the realistic sense. Because sometimes But in the legendary like wartime story, I don't know. I mean Nah, it could be better. It's kinda of funny how we talked about John Wick before this <laughs> we watched it. Yeah, this guy I was would, literally fucking well, John no, Wick times ten. Well, I mean, me and Mercedes said, like, during the movie, we were like, damn, like, this is, like, John Wick's origin story. Yeah, John like, Wick's This is grand, his great-great-grandfather, great yeah. I thought the shots were cool. I also, here, one, before we get into the of what we rate this movie out of 10, the one thing that I also didn't really like about this movie is that when they would shoot him, there's a couple scenes where they could easily just kill him, and there's no reason why they don't kill him. No good reason. There's one good reason in the beginning because the guy's like, there's one good reason why they don't kill him. That's when he's picking up the gold. The guy's about to shoot him, but he's picking up all of his gold to put it back in his bag. And the guy's like, hold on. Let him pick blood and put the gold back in the bag for us so we don't got to pick it up. Okay, that's fair. That's why you shouldn't kill him. Let him do it. He says, okay, now do it. Right, and then he shoots him. That's when he throws the mine down and explodes the mine, right? But there's so many other times where the shitty ass sniper. He kills the boat guy the easily. The boat guy easily, yeah. He kills his own his own teammates like like it's nothing. That guy was just a man though. And then he yeah, wasn't He wasn't immortal. Didn't, he didn't have a Sisu. Sisu in him. Yeah. But he would shoot him, he would like go to like kill him. He's like, "Okay, the sniper takes his gun out, shoots him." Had, have all the time in the world. This misses. is all taking place in an open field. Yes. Shoots him, misses. <laughs> Instead of take, racking his gun and taking another shot because he's been ordered to kill him, he just turns to his boss like, another another shot? Should I go again? <laughs> yes, motherfucker. Finish the job. There's been so there were so many times where he could have killed they could have killed him easily, but they just made it to where they didn't see him or maybe they missed or just there wasn't they didn't get him out of his circumstances. They put him in really impossible circumstances and did not creatively get him out. They just was like, Oh, they missed. Oh, they didn't see him. Oh, he just okay. Oh, we forgot another another good part that was ridiculous. When he's on, is it, this is in the pond scene? Okay, after he just drank or just breathed the air out of the throats. He's a vampire. He, yeah. He takes the dead body that, like we just said, that the sniper oh rifle shoots. God. The sniper yeah. rifle shoots uh, easily. They couldn't. He couldn't hit him the whole movie, but he hits he, his teammate. Yeah. You know, so, easily. So he right in the head. Up. Picks him up to use as a body go- body shield because they start to shoot at him. The sniper guy who sucks ass is like, you know what? Fuck this. Runs to the tank. Gets on the turret. Like what you use to fucking shoot through planes or other tanks. And just starts drilling and Sisu. He's, and he's hitting his every shot. Is. Hitting him right in the body of the dead body. But guess what? It doesn't go through the bullets that dead don't body. go through that dead body. No. Despite on screen 
<laughs> the bullets are literally so big. The bullets are so big they look like the Star Wars laser beams. Yeah. Just beaming through them, hitting the dead body, but it just bounces off the body. A little blood flares off the body. Maybe it was the gold. You should have specified that if it was. Okay, out of 10. I mean, dude, like a four. I was gonna give it just. I was gonna give it a five just because no, of the cinematography. No, that's a four. I mean, it was funny. I was thinking four, but I was gonna. Okay, I, it was. I'll it was five. funny. Just out of movies, just because. I'll go five because it was well shot and look well made. It's just it, the story was just ass, dude. I'm giving it a four, and that's me being generous because I went into this movie thinking that I was gonna see like a really cool. Me too, war dude. I was story. excited. Yeah, I saw in Rotten Tomatoes it was like ninety percent on both critics and audience. Because it's, I mean, it's funny. Like it's, it's a but fun movie. But it's not movie. supposed to be funny. That's yeah, why. It's, exactly. Like I was. I really, yeah, I feel bad. Like I just don't have much to say about this. Eighty-eight movie. audience, ninety-four critics. Who, nobody people. watched this movie. That's the, what the issue is. The, the, only, the only people that watched this movie were the ones that wanted to watch this movie. Yeah, I bet Finland, like, this is like their movie. Finland just made it. Yeah, dude. Uh, 90? That's insane. Let's see. Oh, writer, director on this bad boy. Yeah, I said that at the end. We should have known. It probably wasn't going to be good because it was an hour and a half. Yeah. Usually a movie that's an hour and 30 minutes is usually not very good. Yeah. Especially a war movie. Like, you know, just... If you want a good action movie to see, that you're just going to be like, wow. If you want a good laugh. It's definitely a good laugh. I could not I could not stop laughing. So this critic says, a ball to the wall Nazi killing affair that more than lives up to the hype. Well, I mean, I guess. He kills a lot of Nazis. Not really, though. It's well, just one squad. If you look at a movie like Inglorious Bastards, they kill a whole fucking theater of yeah, Nazis. Yeah. And more. You should want to spend 90 minutes watching Nazis get shot, stabbed, gutted, blown up, run over, and beaten with a variety of inanimate objects in the most violent and, glor- and gory manner possible. This war movie is the answer to your Pope Cinema prayers. So these critics are just people that just want to see some violence on Nazis. They don't really want to see yeah. a good movie. They just look like, if you want to watch Nazis get fucked up, watch this movie. And that's true. He, that fucks, true. he fucks up a good amount of Nazis. Okay, let's see. What was the? What do you think the budget was? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. How much of that was CGI? Like, how much of that was like... I mean, it was in an open field, so... I mean, I guess they could have actually been just like blowing up all that land. The budget was six million. Well, six million. I don't know if that's euros. Is that euro? Yeah, that's euros. What? Did, let's see, six euros to dollars. Six euros. So, six point five million for the budget, and it made. Makes how sense. much do you think it made? Six million dollar budget. How much money did that thing make? Sounds like it's doing pretty good. Eleven. You read the you read the number. Was it eleven? No, but it's ten. Oh, I did not read it. Ten million dollars it made. So it made four million. Not bad. Hey, not bad at all. That's a good movie for being six million. That's about the same production quality that fucking Air had. Probably more production quality than Air. It was and more. Air, made, Air was a ninety million, right? Yeah. Seventy to ninety million. Yeah. That's because that's because Matt Damon made thirty. Yeah. Yeah. A cast that nobody knew of. I mean, it's a fun movie. Yeah, I, I give it. A, I give it a four, but I'm serious. Like, if you just have an hour and a half, that you're just like, hey, let's fuck around and watch this weird movie. Do it. It's funny. It's I don't fun. know if I say it's a good movie, but it's definitely like a fun movie to watch if you're late at night, you don't really care, and you just kind of want to watch the ridiculousness of this movie. Yes, I had a long day today. I was tired. We ate some good food. I needed a movie that I didn't really have to like think much about. Like I just needed to watch. And uh, you know what? That was good. I, I officially upgraded it to a five and a half. 
What? Yeah, I just did it. I can do that. And I just did. I'm still out of five. Just flat up flat straight average five five and a half because i i enjoy a good laugh and i laughed a lot during this movie although i, I say that five is average no nah, i say average movie is like a seven i'll tell you what if the girl in the back of the truck there's there's these nazi girl prisoners um and one of them like starts telling the story of the guy if she had said that that was her father yeah, I would have I put that movie at an eight. No, oh, that would have yeah. been even worse. Oh, no, it would have been awesome. Because uh, I would have loved it so much. Yeah, I th- she was like, and it's also my father. Like, <laughs> I would have I would have gotten up and started clapping. No, dude. I swear to God. I think it was in the beginning, you know how they said he gave up the war and decided to stop fighting completely. Yes. And then they showed the shot that kind of showed that he gave up the war. Remember? He's sitting by himself by the campfire and the planes are flying over him. Yeah. That he's shot, not even looking at the planes. No. And that shot tell, that shot clearly st- shows that he is giving up on the war. He doesn't fight it anymore. Yeah, but then he found the gold. No, that was after he found the gold, I think. Or maybe it was before. He was still digging for the gold. But either way, that should have... That was a visual storytelling enough that they didn't have to like tell us the fact that he gave up on the war we knew that by that one shot that's how you know you know they always say show don't tell and that's true and that's a good example of it you clearly know that he doesn't want to fight in that war by that one shot yeah yet they feel they felt like they had to tell us this movie was made for idiots i feel bad i i truly this is going to be one of our shorter podcasts because i just what is there to say I mean, it, there's it not much. It was just incredibly ridiculous. Yeah, there's just, it's the, there's no like abstract meaning. The only thing I could say is like, it's just like a visualized America or like war legend story that like, you know, people have heard about through thousands of years. And it's like, well, this is really what it would take. That's the only thing I could give you. I wonder if they cut a lot out because. They, I wonder really, if there were like 20 chapters. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, because in the trailer... Like the, the nuclear field. Like. In the trailer, the dog was in it a lot. And the dog was not really in the movie at all. We don't even see them like get back together officially. He never even pet the dog. Yeah. But I'm te- like, whenever he like finally makes it to the bank, the dog's just in the car. We, there's no moment after he survives the plane, the, uh, the plane crash... Or the dog, like, you know. Yeah, it just ended. No, it's just the dog in the in the motorcycle, like the sidecar with him. And it's like, oh, I guess he found the dog. There had have been a scene that they cut out where the dog is like, he's like, because, right, he didn't want the dog. Is that right? I didn't see, I didn't catch that in the beginning, but you and Mercedes said that he like shoot the dog away. No, no, no. That would be like any time like he would get close to a violent situation, he would make the dog just leave. He wanted no. that dog. He loved that dog. And then, yeah, dude, where's the fucking moment where he gets the dog back? There was no moment. After he took off in a plane across the country where the dog can't sniff him out anymore. See what I mean? This movie just doesn't make sense. It's just coincidence after coincidence that helps the homeboy out. Yep. I mean, I guess it is kind of like a representation of a... Just a crazy overthrown war story. Yeah, Yeah, like a legend that just builds over time that becomes so unrealistic that you're like, okay, wow. Yep, five, five or below. I'll give it a five and a half just because I couldn't stop laughing because they just kept. I was like, okay, well, you can't be you can't beat a hanging. They did, they did it. I would not recommend this movie to watch. However, I would say if you're ever bored and just want a good, funny time making fun of a bad movie, this is your movie. This is one of those movies that you watch when you want to watch a bad movie. Yeah. Yeah. A funny bad movie. Where you what's an, what's a good example of a bad of a bad movie? That I'm not like a big like bad movie watcher. I know a lot of people are like they, like they just love like the satisfaction of just watching like dumb shit. Have you Oh, we should watch maybe not next, but at some point we should no, watch we need the to watch, room. We need to watch like an intelligent we did, motherfucker. You say you didn't like it. 
You remember last episode? Maybe I'm a bad movie watcher. <laughs> Have you seen The Room or heard about The Room? Mm-mm. That's a movie that this guy who's uh, he's a somewhere in Europe, but he made this movie and it is it is deemed the worst movie ever made. So much so that James Franco. Oh and, wait, I've seen the I've seen the James Franco yes, movie, The Disaster Artist. Yeah. It's about that movie, and the movie is just the dialogue is horrible. Like they just do random things. Like in one scene, he's like throwing a football for like literally no reason, <laughs> just like just because he wanted to look cool. Because he wrote it, directed it, and starred in it, so he wanted himself to be the coolest character. <laughs> and there's like just so many bad things about the movie because it's just so poorly written. But that's yeah, why people love it because it is shitty. That's a cult movie. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this movie is just a bad movie that people are gonna think is really funny. But at least there's good action. There's good fight scenes. Dude, I'm pretty fucking ashamed that they put it 90% on Rotten Tomatoes. And even on, um, what's the IMDb? It was like seven and a half. Dude, what? I feel like, dude, I feel like we've been so starved of movies, of, of original original movies that people think any original movie is fucking good. I guess we, maybe we seven, should. Seven, 10,000 people almost rated this movie and it was a seven. Maybe we should go back and watch it. Maybe we missed something. Dude, no. Nah. <laughs> no dude not good 10,000 people rated it and they all said it was good no way bro I want to see what a movie reviewer said let's see here's a goof during the first fight scene the soldier holding a gun to Atami that's apparently his name okay So it says whenever he's holding a gun, uh, whenever he gets knifed, he has messy hair. The guy that's holding a gun to him has messy hair. And then when he gets knifed, he's got clean hair, nice and tidy. I think this movie was terrible. I don't it was understand. Bad. It was a bad movie. If this movie was a, okay. I guarantee this movie's way better. The Covenant is definitely going to be way better. Guy Ritchie made it. It's for sure going to be way better. And that's well, then, a 7.6. And this one was a um, 7.2. Damn near the same fucking rating. I think nobody watched this movie. That's what happened. Nobody and nobody who has a good opinion watched this movie. Except for us. Tune in. We've got good opinions. <laughs> okay. That's all I got to say I, about I, this I, fucking I, movie. I, try, I don't have anything else to say. I feel bad. All right. This wasn't our best, but neither was that movie. <laughs> <laughs> These there podcasts was, are a direct reflection of the movie. Yeah, like there just there wasn't much to go off of. Okay. Thanks for listening, and we will see you next time. We're out. Mm-hmm.